My project this summer was on the combined effects of novel mucosally derived peptides on intestinal epithelial wound healing. Inflammatory bowel diseases such as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are characterized by chronic inflammation. Currently, over 200,000 Canadians are affected by these diseases and the incidence is increasing, particularly amongst children. Although there are drugs that are meant to reduce the immune and inflammatory responses that characterize these diseases, these drugs are often ineffective and it leads to mucosal damage and damage at the intestinal epithelial barrier. Therefore, part of the research, therefore, to facilitate mucosal healing, epithelial repair is required. Part of the research in our lab is finding ways to basically increase the rate of mucosal healing. And from the research that they conducted, they found three novel peptides derived from the proteins CLCA1, Reg1, and TFF3, which were found to independently increase the rate of mucosal healing. For my project this, this summer, we wanted to see if these three peptides, which were found to independently increase the rate of mucosal healing, would have a synergistic effect on wound healing when they were combined and used together. To first test this, we wanted to determine which concentration of our positive control would be best to compare with our peptides. So for our positive control, we used EGF, which is known to facilitate mucosal healing. And to test this, we took KCO2 cells, which are cells from the colon cancer epithelial cell line, and we grew them to confluent monolayers by plating them onto 96 well, plate, well plates. Seven days post-confluence, the cells are scratch wounded and they were treated with either five nanograms per milliliter of EGF or 10 nanograms per milliliter of EGF. And once the cells were treated, they were placed in the Image Express PICO microscope where images of the cells were taken every six hours for 48 hours. After 48 hours, the resulting wounds, they were traced um, using image J. So, from conducting this experiment, we found that both the 5 nanogram per milliliter concentration of EGF and the 10 nanogram per milliliter concentration of EGF both had a statistically significant effect on wound healing compared to their respective controls. So because of this, we used that lower concentration of 5 nanograms per milliliter of EGF as our positive control when we were testing our peptides. So once we moved on to the peptides, we conducted the same experiment where we took KCO2 cells, we plated them onto 96 well plates and we grew them to confluent monolayers. Seven days post confluence, the cells were scratch wounded and treated um, with the peptides combined together. So all three peptides were combined and used to treat these cells. Um, then we also had another group, which was our control for the peptides, which was 30% water. Then we had our positive control, which is which was our five nanogram per milliliter concentration of EGF. And then we also had the vehicle control for that positive control as well. Then once again, we put the cells in the Image Express PICO microscope, which took images of the cells every six hours for 48 hours. After 48 hours, the area of the wounds were then measured using image J. So from this, we found that although that the EGF had a statistically significant effect on wound healing compared to its control, which was expected, um, because we saw that from the previous experiment, the peptides, when they were combined together, did not have a statistically significant effect on wound healing So uh, compared to its control. So while the mean percent wound healed after treatment with the peptides was 59.8%, it was not statistically significant compared to the vehicle control, whose mean percent wound healed was 55.9%. So because of this, we concluded that the peptides did not have a synergistic effect on wound healing. Future experiments will now investigate if different concentrations of peptides to see if this has effect on wound healing. And we'll also try wound healing on different types of cells to see if there's lots of cell specific. So in addition to looking at KCO2 cells, we'll also look at T84 cells. So with that, I would like to thank the people in the lab that made this project possible, as well as my funding, which was NSERC, as well as the Crohn's and Clitus Canada, the Snyder Institute for Chronic Diseases, and the Alberta Children's Hospital. Thank you for listening.